Okay, great. Thank you for coming, everybody. We're going to call this meeting to order. Wednesday, March 1st, this, 1st, this is the virtual meeting of the Northampton License Commission. And as a reminder, this uh, meeting is being recorded. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Commissioner Jennifer Ewers. Is there anybody here for public comment? Seeing nobody for public comment, we're going to jump right in. Agenda item number three, application for a short-term liquor license. This is for the Academy of Music Incorporated at 274 Main Street, Friday, March 17th, 2023, from 7 to 11 p.m. for Grace Potter. And the Academy is seeking a wine and malt license with a waived fee. Hi, Melissa. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So do you have anything to add to your usual... I have nothing to add. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. That's fine. Jennifer, do you have any questions for Melissa? No questions. Thank you for submitting thorough paperwork, but I'm, I'm yes. fine. All right. Then if there's nothing else, I will make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda item number three. And I will also move to approve the requested fee waiver. I second. And Natasha? Yes. And um, Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Item number four, applications for a short-term liquor license for Signature Sounds recordings, Signature Sounds 32 Masonic Street. This is for the Back Porch Music Festival. Wine and Malt is requested for the following dates. Friday, March 3rd, 2023, 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, March 4th, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday, March 5th, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And do we have someone here from Signature Sounds? Yeah, that's me. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. And what is your name? I'm Chris Freeman. Great, thank you for coming. Um, so I know we approved some of these at our last meeting, but is there anything that you wanted to share about the event? Um, no, it should be a lot no? of fun. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what's relevant here, but I can answer any questions. But I, yeah. um, Jennifer, do you have any questions? I have a question about the liquor liability insurance. Um, yeah. Has that policy been secured? We, we received a quote, and I just want to make sure that that is bound yes. and enforced. Yes, I have it right here. I don't Perfect. know. Yeah. And you can uh, send that to Annie Lesko? Yep. Mm -hmm. And what's the effective date, Chris? Is it for Friday? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, it 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 is. I'm looking for it to, yeah, it's the three, three to three, five. So yeah, Friday through Sunday. Perfect. Annie, that's what we need, correct? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, um, Jennifer, did you have anything else? No, no further questions. Okay, neither do I. Um, Chris, last chance if you want to add anything. You guys froze. Okay, Chris, can you hear us? I think Chris is frozen. We'll go ahead and approve this then. I think he's all set. Agenda item number four, I'll move to make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor licenses as outlined in the agenda item. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Chris. All right, next up, we have agenda item number five. This is the application for short-term liquor license for the Ireland Forever Foundation, Saturday, June 3rd, 2023, 11.30 to 6.30 p.m. This is for the Ireland Forever Festival taking place at the three county fairgrounds and the license being sought is an all alcohol. And do we have Tim here? I see two Tim. I am here. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good, thank you. It's a pleasure so, to be here. Yes, we're glad that you're here and nice and early. You'll be really ready. I'm, I'm so non-high tech. I had my laptop and my tablet both in, <laughs> in case one didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. We'll take two of you. Yeah, I like your thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, well, so there's only so one now. Great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the event? I know you do this yearly, but why don't you share? Yeah, it's um, basically, well, there are some differences. I added a road race at the beginning in the morning, oh, nice. same day. And I'm also having one less band, so it's ending earlier, uh, mm -hmm. ending at seven o'clock. Uh, cause it made, it just was for, a, it made for a long day. Uh, so that's really the, and I'm adding, let's see, a whiskey tasting tent, um, which, um, Sean Barry, the owner of Four Seasons in Hadley, uh, will give talks on the different styles of Irish whiskey and, uh, doing a seminar, possibly bringing some expert on Irish whiskey, which is kind of cool. He does the same thing at the Scottish festival at Look Park. Right. Um, and you guys might be familiar with that, but yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, other than that, uh, not much else different. Okay. And we're still waiting on your tips, certification and insurance. Yeah. We'll, we'll have, uh, I'll have the same crew as last year. I can bring into the office, uh, the tips cards. I've got my own, uh, Gary, um, Bogoff, the owner of Berkshire Brewing, and in fact, uh, commercial won't be participating this year, so we'll need less uh, service as we're just going to have Berkshire do the beer. Um, so that's helpful. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing else that I can think of. Uh, I have, uh, I know for the insurance, I have it with Wayland's. It's been paid for. I expect it shortly. Uh, I know they asked for a liability of minimum of 500000 I got a million with $3 million aggregate because it wasn't that much more like $16 more than having the 2 million aggregate. So I said, what the heck for 13 or $16. So the city and the fairgrounds are covered even more. Okay. And uh, I expect to have a better crowd this year because last year we had the Hadley Young Men's Club, uh, the Country in the Country Festival was the same day along with the Asparagus Festival in Hadley, which made for a kind of a a busy, messy day in Hadley. So Hadley Young Men's Club moved their country festival to the end of June, which okay. will help us. So I'm glad about that. Great. Sounds like some good changes this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, do you have any questions for Tim? I don't. No, I'm looking forward to this event. Okay. Excellent. Good. Tim, I hope to see you all there. Did you want to add anything else, Tim? I, I think that's it. Actually, I've got a group going to Ireland October 19th, coming back on the 29th. That's also um, up on the website, which is uh, IrelandForever.com. Nice. That sounds like fun. I'll be there. Oh, the yeah. Day. In a while for me. All right. Then I will make a motion then to approve the application for the short-term liquor license outlined in agenda item number five, contingent upon submitting the appropriate tips and insurance paperwork. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Tim. Best wishes. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. See bye you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Natasha, sorry. Before yes. you move forward, I did see Chris come back. Um, okay. Um, should I ask him to yep. unmute? you? Okay. Yep, that's fine. I'm sorry, I lost lost internet at an inopportune moment. That's okay. You didn't miss much. We approved your license. Oh, great. That, yeah. That's a big. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> You're um, all set. Okay, thank you. So I'm good to go. Here. You're good to go. Do I need to drop off like this paperwork with you, Annie? That's yeah, I'll I'll reach out in the morning once I've. Um, created your licenses and you can pick them up, pay the fee and drop that off. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. No Thanks, Chris. See ya. See ya. All right. Moving on then. Item number six, we have an application for a transfer of common Victor license transferring from Woodstar Cafe LLC to Baking Grounds LLC DBA Woodstar Cafe. And we have some folks here from Woodstar. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Do you want to just state your names for the record? Sure. I'm Rebecca Robbins. I'm Dimitri Robbins. Hello. Nice to see you both. So the cafe is transferring, I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And do we have the person here who you're transferring to? I'm just curious. I see yes. Um, he just stood up. Sarah, 
His name is Mark Krause, but he's logged okay. in under his wife's name, Sarah Goodwin, on the screen. Okay. Not. Oh, there we go. Oh, here he comes. He's back. Okay, great. Um, and there's Sarah. And there's Sarah. Okay. okay. Hi, Hello. Mark Krause. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Good, Sorry, I was you. having an issue with unmuting my laptop. Well, nope, actually, it's... Sarah's laptop. <laughs> totally fine. No worries. Um, we have all of the appropriate documents for the transfer, but I just wanted to give you both an opportunity to say anything you would like to say or you think is relevant. Well, um, I noticed when you read the application, it called, it named us as Woodstar Cafe LLC, but mm -hmm. we are Woodstar Cafe Incorporated. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you that update matters. on your end? Okay. And um, I think most well i don't know if anybody has concerns and if they do we're happy to talk to those folks um our main concern at this time is the privacy of this arrangement for um about 24 more hours um we can't actually do the deal until this is approved and so our staff doesn't know um until about two o'clock tomorrow okay we, we feel like we owe it to our staff for their, you know, they work incredibly hard and with great integrity, we would like to be the ones to tell them and, you know, not to, for them to hear it uh, through the grapevine. So we ask humbly for all present to please hold your, hold your fire till tomorrow after 4 p.m. I mean, we know this is a public meeting. We understand that. Um, yeah, right. no, I, I appreciate you saying that. And can refrain from posting it on Facebook or talking too much about it outside yes. of this meeting. Yes, and we do have some uh, members of the press at this meeting for mm -hmm. various reasons. Okay. Um, and I hope that they've heard that so they can keep it under wraps for you. Yeah, we need until two o'clock tomorrow. Okay. okay. Well, congratulations in advance. Okay. This is probably pretty big for you guys to. It's pretty big deal. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The other thing I'd like to say is that we couldn't be happier with the partner that we found in Mark. That's fantastic. Uh, we feel like the two businesses have worked together for you know the better part of two decades, and we understand each other very well. And the businesses mesh together incredibly well. And uh, Rebecca and I are staying on as employees, so we will still be here participating. And uh, we feel like it's a addition of new resources, new ideas, new talents, and that it's only going to make uh, the Woodstar better as we move forward. That's great. I mean, I, uh, everybody's busy, but I do have one other really quick thing because I thought you were going to say, I agree with everything you say, but um, it's also been a pleasure doing business in Northampton and with the city of Northampton. It's just been a great place to have a business. That's really great to hear. Thank you for sharing that. The reporters can print that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking forward to being in Northampton. Um, we're we're really happy about this transaction and are looking forward to being in town. Um, and it seems, been speaking to Rebecca and Dimitri, that it, it is a great place to do business, obviously. So um, we'll see you on Friday. That's yeah. great. Well, if you approve our license, of course. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you're going to have a problem with that approval today. I don't think so. Jennifer, did you have any questions or comments? I do not, but I'm very excited. I think this is a great partnership. Yeah. It's really a continuation of the relationship that you've both built over the years. So I commend you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Then if there's nothing else, I will go ahead and move to approve the application for the transfer of common victor license from Woodstar Cafe Incorporated to Baking Grounds LLC, DBA Woodstar Cafe. I second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on then. Item number seven, we have a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual wine and malt restaurant license and change of category to include cordials, liqueurs, and an application for a new common victor license. Transferring from Wine Witch LLC to Gombo, correct me if I mispronounce that, Oyster Bar LLC at 159 Main Street. The proposed manager is John Piscor. 
Um, I am going to make a motion to open the public hearing. I think I need your second, Jennifer. I'm on mute. I second. Oh, okay, great. And uh, Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Is there anybody here to speak to this matter? Anybody from the public? I don't see any hands coming up. Then we will jump right in. So, John. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. This is very Thank exciting. You. Well, thank you. Yeah, it is. I'm uh, been working hard in here, so <laughs> lots to do, as you know. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you are um, going to be doing and how to pronounce it correctly? So it is pronounced gombo, and gombo, it will okay. be. It will be an oyster bar as well as a Creole New Orleans style kitchen. Uh -huh. So we're going to do a lot of uh, Cajun and Creole cuisine and uh, a lot of fun music and and uh, hopefully a lively atmosphere to for diners uh, in town. Hopefully to bring some uh, a nice fun night out. So, but uh, yeah, that's kind of a in a nutshell. Um, just trying to get up and running and get sanitary and all the good stuff that comes along with it. And when do you plan to open or hope to open? Uh, I'm hoping to open about mid-April, um, but uh, I was, I'm erring on the side of caution to wait until the, li the liquor license comes in before I open, because I have opened previous restaurants prematurely to liquor licenses, and sometimes the customer base isn't so happy with the fact that uh, they don't have it when they show up, so. Yep. That makes so we'll sense. see. Hopefully, forty-five days would be a good would be like the best case scenario. So we'll see if it's before that and we're ready to go. Then it'd be great. And speaking of licenses and you having some experience opening businesses with them, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I used to own uh, JP Steakhouse in Southampton. Okay. So uh, uh, that was a, a fun little venture. Uh, previously, Opa Opa, but I'm also been in the business for twenty years as an executive chef. I started at fourteen and. Worked my way up and uh, I've done some uh, food and beverage direction before as well. And uh, so I'm excited to uh, bring my business to Northampton on Main Street. And uh, hopefully we get a lot of people who love Cajun food <laughs> and that'll be, be awesome. Yeah, well, we don't have any Cajun food currently, so this will be a nice addition. I'm Jennifer, do you have some any questions or comments for John? Um, well, can I ask Annie quickly, is the paperwork complete for the transfer? Yes, it is. I have everything. I have everything that I need at the moment. Perfect. Perfect. Well, John, I'm excited. I think you'll replace the loss of uh, Chef Wayne's. I mean, because that was that was a relaxed and fun atmosphere. Yeah, I actually was uh, the executive chef for Chef Wayne in Williamsburg for five years early in my career when I was about 20. So. Uh, that's kind of what the inspiration was that that uh, experience for me brought out a lot of passion for food. And um, I feel like post COVID world, we're, we're really needing a place to go and have fun more than just to go out to eat, you know, so that's the biggest driver of this whole project in, in general. So nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for you. Thanks. And for our city. Um, John, do you have anything else to add before I close the hearing and deliberate with Jennifer? I don't think so. Okay. Just uh, like I said, uh, we'll be reaching out shortly to uh, get our health inspections in order and all that when when we're ready to go. But okay. for now, a couple more couple more weeks of deep diving in here. So <laughs> yeah, it'll be worth it. All right, then I will make a motion to close the public hearing. I second. And Natasha. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Um, Jennifer, I have I have no concerns about this transfer. I think it's really exciting and I'm thrilled that the the um, location isn't going to be one that sits empty for a long time. Same here. And I and with his experience, yeah, I'm confident that this is this will work well. Yep. Great. Then I don't see a to delay. Annie, did you say something? Sorry, yeah, I just this is so this is also an upgrade to change of category to include cordials mm -hmm. and liqueurs. I just want to make sure that I didn't yep. hear you read that on the agenda, and I'm sure you did. I think I did. Okay, I'm sure you did. Okay. 
Um, but Amy, you said that you had all the paperwork that was required. I do, I do, yes. Okay. Okay, great. Then are we ready? I'm ready. Okay, super. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the transfer of an annual wine and malt restaurant license and a change of category to include cordial liqueurs and an application for a new common victor license for Gombo Oyster Bar LLC opening at 159 Main Street. I second. Yay. And Yay. Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Nice. Congratulations, John. Thank, Thank you, guys. John. Appreciate it so much. We'll see you out there. I'm going to hang on and listen to what uh, the hearing is for uh, the Eric Serher license that's available. So <laughs> there's no there is no hearing for a license today. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, the next hearing is for something separate, and then it's just updates for the. For the oh, rest. Okay. But gotcha. you're welcome to stay. Okay. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next agenda item. We have a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and change of ownership on a common victual license, entertainment license, and automatic amusement device license. Transferer is William F. Akers Jr. The transferee is Saratoga Sports Bar Incorporated. Do we have someone? I am here. Oh, hello. How are you? Good, thanks. Great, thank you for coming. Um, I'm gonna make a motion to open the public hearing. I second. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Is there anyone here for public comment regarding this agenda item? Seeing nobody, we'll jump right in. Hello again. Hi, so we um, saw you not too long ago when the original transfer happened. Yep. So as I understand it, um, today you are, you're setting up a corporation for it and it, that's yeah. what, the, what the change is. Yes. Okay. Um, I know, I think Annie already spoke with you about this today, but I noted on the application for the entertainment that you, you checked the outdoor box as well as the indoor box. Yep. I saw it yeah. on there. And... <laughs> Yeah, so put that's... it in there just just to yep. add it in there. I'm, it's not. Sure. I'm not saying I'll do it every weekend like a lot of these other places do yep. something every Friday nights or Thursday nights. Uh, mine would be more uh, occasional, right? Some kind of event going on or something like that. Yep. Okay, and it would be right near the front of the 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 bar because that's where the power is and stuff like that. Otherwise, right. Big parking lot, and you have to run every cords and everything across it. Sure, it's not going to work. So out. you might have noticed that the application that you filled out this time is different from the one you filled out last time. Yeah. So we've added um, the specification of are you doing this inside or outside, and then we've also asked for kind of a a sketch of a floor plan that would be used so that we can have on file where uh, the outdoor entertainment is going to be happening if it yeah. is if it happens. Yep. And the reason that we we did that was because we are doing more, um, we're seeing more people wishing to have entertainment outside. And sometimes it can be very disturbing for a butters. Right. So which if we have a better understanding of what intentions are on the license holders, then then we can um we can help deal with any problems should they come up. Okay. But it's really about um, and you'll see this on the license itself, it's about being a good neighbor to neighbors. Yeah, it wouldn't be a late thing outside. Him. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, Jennifer, uh, do you have some comments or questions? Um, just with the mention of the outdoor venue, um, I would be interested in, in the capacity, but I don't even know if you're that far ahead, Bill. I mean, have you thought of the sort of the logistics if you were outdoors or are we skipping ahead? Just, yeah, probably skip it ahead. I, I just more or less put it on there because it was an option on there. But uh, more, I'd probably more have it inside than I would outside anyways. Um, like I said, it would be more of an event going on than um, like an everyday thing or every weekend. Yes. It'd be more inside than how, but it was just an occasional thing, I figured. But if, if I need to make a sketch, I, I found out today. I was yeah. supposed yeah. to get a sketch. I can do that. Yeah, that would be, be great. That would be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Okay. okay. 
Um, and Bill, did you have anything else that you wanted to add about about this? Uh, no, no. Okay. Just, just try doing the transfer, basically. For the okay. Corporate, so it's administrative. So I will make a motion then to close the public hearing. Second. Natasha. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Um, Jennifer, do you have any concerns or additional comments? Not at this time. No, nope, we'll just wait for the additional info. Okay, same. So, sorry, just so I'm clear, are you approving the outdoor? I would like the outdoor to be contingent on getting a floor plan in hand. Okay. okay. And then it comes back to you or, and then, or you're okay with it? I'm okay with it if we have it on file. Jennifer, would you be okay with that? Yes. Yep, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, great. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the transfer of the annual all alcohol restaurant license and change of ownership on a common VIC license, entertainment license, and automatic amusement device license as outlined in agenda item. It looks like agenda item number one, Annie. Oh, wow. That's not it's, supposed to be that. It's okay. Um, and this will be contingent on having a um, floor plan on file for any outdoor entertainment. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Then you are all set, Bill. Thank you for Thanks. coming here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate yes, it. good luck with the, with the bar. Thank you. All right, then moving on to agenda item number eight, application for a new common victualler license. This is for the Zen Frog LLC at 90 Maple Street in Florence. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, do you wanna just state your name for the record? I think it's the first time you've been here. Yeah, it's Michelle Ruchop. Great. And tell us all about what you're up to. Yeah, so the Parsons Block building um, where Birds is was purchased and the developers are over there renovating the building and have a lot of really great plans for it. So we're actually getting keys um, April 1st for the spot that's right beside the pizza place. So Birds, the pizza place and where kid stuff used to be and um, putting in a little coffee shop um, and we're just going to sell pastries, so no cooking, but something, I just wanted to do something for the community to, you know, um, I don't know, to try to get some more traffic and downtown, and um, yep. I got to Florence about two and a half years ago, so I'd love to see it start to blossom like the surrounding areas have, especially if the gentlemen are, you know, really interested in upgrading the building. It's such a beautiful old building, and they've been super helpful. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. I uh, I sold, I used to own a textbook production company so, and I sold it about five years ago and I've just kind of been waiting. I wasn't sure if I was going to do something else. So um, this is a new business for me, but I love starting. I've had other businesses too. So I'm excited to learn. And I think we're going to just start with some limited hours at first and kind of work our way into the market and see how it goes. Yep. Well, my office is in the center of Florence and I live a couple blocks away from the center of Florence. And so I can say I'm very excited to hear that you're opening in the center of Florence. Thanks. So thank you for that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. No, that's yeah, same here. So you have a couple a uh, couple of regulars already. That you already. Do, so <laughs> that's super exciting. Um and it has been, it's been a nice to watch that building sort of get zhuzhed up. Yeah. yeah. And the and they're they're really so far they've been really nice guys and they're super excited about it they're very hands-on they're there every week watching things and yeah. um yeah it's been great yeah it's nice to see the pride of ownership back there totally exactly yeah right? yeah. yeah i mean for, for a building i mean it was built in 1800 it's just so beautiful to and they're not real they're you know they're keeping the old tin ceilings and they're just really trying to maintain a lot of the old stuff nice and there will be a bathroom in there right yeah your application says that yeah, they're they're actually installing the ADA bathroom right now. Oh, wonderful. Nice. Okay. Sweet. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add? 
The only thing I don't have is I don't have the workers comp in place yet, just because yep. I'm kind of early to the process. So um, I haven't been able to get it yet. So yep. what do I need? Do I need to get that to you guys or who? So you yeah, you'll get that to Annie. What we, we can vote on this. And if we approve it, we can approve it contingent, the workers compensation insurance. Okay. Okay. So well, you'll, have to, you'll have time to get that. And then any, you know, specific information about the process or what you're going to need, Annie will be your expert. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Um, Jennifer, did you have anything else you wanted to ask or share? No, I'm excited. This is great. Yes. Great. Then if you're all set, Michelle, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve your application for a new common victor license contingent upon receiving the appropriate workers' compensation insurance. I second. And um, Natasha? Yes. <laughs> and Jennifer? Yes. You know, nice. It's a long day. Yes. Yes. Long, it? Congratulations, Michelle. Congratulations. Well, so all right. See we'll see you soon. Okay. Can't wait. All right. That's fun. It's exciting to have some new, new business, literally. New business. Um, item number nine, update from Eric Schuer via the clerk on building permits for the annual all alcohol restaurant license held by 2123 Center Street, LLC. Okay. So I received an email. Let me yesterday evening, and I'll just read it back to you for the record. I'm writing to inform you that our contractor has submitted a building permit application to the building department for the work commencing at 21 Center Street. I will provide a copy of the building permit once received. Okay. That's good news. And Annie, do you happen to know how long it takes um, applications for permits for something like this to get approved? I can find out tomorrow. Okay. I should have looked that. I should have anticipated your question, but um, no, I don't. I don't think it takes too long to get it accomplished, and I can't imagine there'd be any reason why it would be denied. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, okay. I can also ask that if there if there's any, what would be a ground a grounds for denial of a okay. permit if they get denied? Yeah. Sure. And I ask only because we have. Um, you know, we have a timeline in place. Yeah, yeah. So this piece of getting the building permit um, application and acceptance, and then the next update will be regarding the potential tenant, correct? And then that would be at the April meeting? Yes. Okay. Jennifer, did you have anything about that that you wanted to? No. Nope. Annie, did you? No, that's that's all I got. All right. Well, then let's move on. Agenda item number 10, discussion and vote on proposed hybrid meetings plan. Thank you for sending us the um, proposed plan. Of course. Um, I actually have it on maybe like 90% positive that the there is going to be an extension. Um, there was a bill filed and it was supposed to be voted on today by the House um, and then it needs to go to the Senate and the governor. But I think I'm like 90% positive it's going to pass. So, and I think it would go until 2025. Wow. Um, so, but I think just to be safe, I think we should there should be a vote anyways. Do we have a vote though? I mean, if if it ends and we have to go hybrid, is there something to vote on? There would be, I mean, you would be voting on the hybrid, I guess the regulations in that document. Mm -hmm. um, but then I guess if it, if it does pass, then that you'd have to decide, um, if you want to stay remote or go hybrid. If the extension passes, you mean? Right, right. Okay. Then you can then you can decide whether if you if you just want to stay remote. Right. Or go hybrid. Yeah. Um I I love that the hybrid option is available for business owners. So nobody has to leave their 
their workplace to do that. I like that it affords us the flexibility as volunteers to be able to um, participate in the meetings from wherever. That said, I'm totally fine with being the, you know, being in person if it comes to that, just for the record. Um, I don't have any issue with that. If, but if the, um, given the choice, if the majority of the commission plus Annie prefers to stay completely remote, then that's fine by me also. Okay. Uh, Annie, were you going to, to say something on Helen's behalf or oh, really? uh, just want us to discuss? And it's kind of weird. I didn't realize there was this extension going on. Um, yeah, no. And I found out yesterday um, from um, our state rep, uh, Lindsay Zabadosa, she let us know because also there's an outdoor dining piece in there that we're, we're hoping for. Um, and it's all in the same bill. So, so, I mean, yeah, I can, I can read, I can let you know what Helen's, um, edits would be now it's, it's like, so do we vote on the, I, now it's, I don't really know what to do because if we vote on this, does that mean, I guess we'll have to, I'll have to or um, do we do we vote and make it contingent upon the decision that is pending? Well, no, because you would you would vote the regulations. It's really just then a matter of do you want to meet in person or or do you want to meet hybrid or just stay remote? And that can be I can just reach out to you all individually and see what we want to do for the April meeting if. The extension goes through. If it doesn't, then we would be in hybrid. Does that make sense? So you'd like us to vote tonight if we'd like to continue or if we would like to adapt the hybrid model? Yeah, yes. I think it's I think it's critical to make sure that these regulation or these these this plan is in place in the event that you have to go hybrid for the April meeting. Um, but if the extension goes through, then I can, I can just reach out individually and see what you, what you all want to do. Sure. No, I'm if comfortable with that. Okay. Natasha, are you comfortable with that? Yep, I am. But sorry, so just Helen clarification. Just, did Helen sorry. have, did Helen have something to? She just, she really, um, she, well, she had a question and she asked if the hybrid, um, or if the members of the public includes applicants, um, and I, I think my intention was, yes, it should, but I think it should be clear that applicants can also appear remotely yeah. as well. So I think mm -hmm. I would just, um, I would just add a line about applicants appearing remotely um, would go before, no, excuse me, applicants appearing in person would, would be taken before those who are appearing remotely. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those housekeeping. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we would have to include that verbiage. And Jennifer, were we to go hybrid, would you would you prefer to be the second commissioner present or not present. So that's so tricky because I also um, I'm on the Northampton Chambers Board of Directors and we have arrive at fives the first Wednesday of the month. Yep. Um, I do have a schedule ahead of time. So I do know like what's local and easy, you know, to get to and and what would be a challenge. And I don't know if I'm answering that great. No, you are. You are. Then I, I guess in that event, maybe you and Helen could work out who. Right. Because I, I also know that Helen has a busier season. So it's, I feel like between the two of us, you'll have your second commissioner in place. Yep. It's just something that Helen and I have to communicate because I think there are times when she would be the, the second person on site versus myself. And I know we've, we've is this an opportunity then to talk again about changing the day 
of our meetings, if that makes sense to you. I don't know if there's a better day for Helen. Um, there's probably, I don't know if there's a better day for you, Annie, there might be. I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, I think we should discuss that A, when Helen's here and B, when it's specifically if it called out on the agenda. Yep. Yep. So okay. if I can put that on the uh, April meeting agenda. Sure. All right. Great. And I just I'm, I pulled up the hybrid um, proposal and and what basically what Helen wanted us to add is applicants are welcome to join the proceedings remotely or in person. Okay. So that that's what that's the language that I would use. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And it's, it also says commissioners are asked to share their plans with the clerk as to what, whether they intend to participate remotely or in person at least two days prior to the meeting. So they can't, I mean, whatever, whichever one works better for Helen or Jennifer for whatever meeting, I mean, you can alternate or however, however it works for everyone's schedule. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I've lost track. Are we voting on this? <laughs> Yes, voting with um, the addition, mo voting on the proposal. Yes, voting on, yes, so voting on it. Okay, and can I just reference your memo or do you want me to read the whole thing? Um, you can uh, You can just reference the memo. Okay. And I'll put it in the minutes for the record. Okay, and you will update the language of applicants? I will, yes. Okay. Fabulous. Then I will make a motion to accept the hybrid format should it be required in April as outlined in the memorandum dated February 27th. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. We all set on that one? Moving on then, approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the February 1st minutes. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And item 12, new business. Uh, so I only had well, I guess for the record, um, Eric did appeal the the Pearl Street cancellation. So now we will, I, I'll just get notification of a hearing date. Um, so it's, it's really just a waiting game now. So we can't act on the, the license until that has been ironed out. Okay. And he had a certain period of time to file that appeal, correct? He did. He had five days from receipt of the letter. Okay. Yep. And typically, we haven't um, canceled a license this iteration of the commission. Do you know typically how long it takes for the um, hearing to happen? So I have not dealt with a right. cancellation in my almost six years. So I don't know either. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's an adventure for all of us. Yes, it is. Right. But Annie, you are the contact person with the ABCC for this. So they would I notify am. you directly of the next steps. Yes, and they and they did. They said that when they notified me of the appeal, that they were they would reach out with the date of the hearing. Perfect. Yeah, and we're not required to be at the hearing. That's a separate. No, not required. No. Okay. Okay, great. Um, outdoor dining. Yes. So I was going to inquire whether or not you'd be willing to have a possible special meeting in the month of March to um, accept extension of premise applications because um, before we knew that this um, bill was going to pass, 
the ABCC had been telling us that all applicants who want to do outdoor dining this year are, would have to go through the pr proper channels. So they'd have to pay the fees, they'd have to do the legal notice and um, send out a butters notices and it would be a lengthy laborious process. So um, in order to get that going, um, I was gonna see if you guys wanted to be willing to hold an, an extra meeting a few days in advance of the April meeting, just because it's gonna take a while at the ABCC to approve the applications um, in time for like, the outdoor dining season. But since um, I'm 90% positive that the extension of the uh, relaxation of regulations is gonna pass, I don't think it's necessary anymore. Okay, I should it come up, I would be willing to do that to start the process so the restaurants can be outside. Yeah, me too. Great. That's important. Great mm -hmm. to know. Not a problem. Anything else? That is it. Jennifer, do you have any new business? No, but no new business. All right. Neither do I. Then I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Natasha? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you both.